Um, Banks has certainly taken me to some of the country's most interesting carp fishing locations. London's been at the top of the list now for a couple of years, and of course, there was only ever one angler I was going to go on that mission with, the incredible Alfie Russell. Well, just got into London and I'm going to pick up young Alfie Russell. Alfie grew up here, you know, he knows a place like the back of his hand, he's caught some amazing fish, he's just a gifted <laughs> angler. So yeah, we're going to go and check out some park lakes, bits of tidal river, the river itself, the canals, the basins. We're going to have a right adventure. Not long now till I get him, and uh, yeah, let's go and see what the city has to offer. And not wait. Yes, Al. That's the one you watch on the telly. Have you just woken up? Yeah. Been having a sleep, mate. What's your plans? Where are you going? I don't know. He's the master, mate. Like, he is the, the holy grail of London carpet. Yeah. Now, I think we're going. Where are we going on the river? Yeah. Now, I'm looking forward to it, man. Going to be the A406 in the next four hours. See ya, boy. <laughs> We've got a matching one now, Al. <laughs> oh dear. Right, let's go fish it. I like it in the city when the air is so thick and no pain. I love it to see everybody in the short skirt and shorts and shades. <laughs> Go to a uh, bow. Yeah, bow is a little bit of um, river at well, say a little bit. It's actually like spaghetti junction of rivers, canals, and bits and bobs. So we're going there, we've got a few options open. Uh, it'd be lovely to catch one out the river, out the tidal river, and maybe even out of uh, the canal if we're lucky. Let's go uh, find them. Let's go catch them. Let's go, <laughs> let's go catch them, them bruv. <laughs> You've got all your um, gear sorted, haven't you? Yeah, I've got. Have you? Well, or did I pick you up and yeah, you, you picked me up and I had to. Uh... You've been doing your typical half. I know what the problem here is, mate. You've been sleeping in the daytime and fishing all night at all manner of places because I've been trying to get hold of you this last week. And basically, Alfie's unavailable at any time. I'm not prior to see Nocturne. If you don't know me, this I'm not funny, isn't it? This is, this is Alan. Yeah, so... We're the complete opposite. So this is going to go really well. I'm on a day shift and you're on a night shift. Ollie, you're filming the night shift. Carl's filming the day shift. Like, smash this up. Smash this up. standing there and uh, we were just talking about yeah it'd be nice to see a few of them getting here it must be nice all the oxygen pumping through and that I said I bet they swim around in packs don't they up and as I said the word packs this pack of them just come through uh, there's about I don't know seven six seven of them one of them half decent Having spotted a few carp, my immediate instinct was to grab a sawn off of a bread bomb and have a few casts to judge the fish's reaction. Not quite the plan to hook a bream almost immediately. Well, who said bream fishing was boring? It's utterly wrong, because that was super exciting. There's a few carp knocking about. To be fair, they're ultra spooky. Um, 
they definitely get fish for. There's a couple of lads down there fishing, and basically Alf and I are presenting slow sinking bread in front of them, and they're just darting off. They're coming back, but I think it's going to take you know rigs down on the deck, a little bit of bait around it, and a sort of bait and weight approach. But I have managed to catch this pretty made up. First bite and all that. This isn't Bream Banks, but as Bream go, this is actually quite a special one. We chose to position our rods before the tide began to rise when we could clearly see the spots that the carp kept visiting. Heavy inline leads and short hook links, all packed inside solid bags that left us settled in for the night full of confidence. ladders all around us bar this little section here luckily i brought my own my own special urban ladder thought about bringing the drop net but at the time this seemed like a much better option until i got here and saw quite how far down it is i've already been down one of the sort of man-made ladders and that was all right you know very firm but i'm gonna have to give this a go maybe if we're lucky enough to get a bite rising tide had wiped out most of our rods. There was still the odd fish in the area, but even the rods that hadn't been wiped out hadn't been touched. It was time to get moving. It's 20 degrees, it's hot. Where can we go and find a few fish? Any of the basins? Yeah, we'll probably go down Shadwell, I think. There's a lot of carp in there, nice ones as well. I want to try and hook up with DJ actually, I've been speaking to him for a little while, he's, I don't know if you've heard of him, you don't really listen to dubstep, Not do you? Not really, no. He's top of his game, man. <laughs> he loves fishing, man. Does so, he like fish, does yeah, he? Yeah, man. <laughs> so it'd be nice to hook up with him for a little while, chuck the rods out. Let's go see if we can find them again. Yeah, hopefully get a few bites today and uh, see what the day brings, eh? Yeah, come on the car. <laughs> Well, we're down at Shadwell Basin, not long here. Uh, probably been here half hour, 45 minutes. First time I've ever seen the place. Yeah, it's impressive. The only problem being, it's got a big algal bloom on it at the moment. It's absolute pea green color, um, which is gonna make spotting fish really quite difficult. But we've done a lap, met a lad from over in the flats who's uh, very kindly shown us round. Um, decided to sort of pitch up here because it's a lot shallower. It actually goes down to 30 foot. But yeah, gonna keep things really, really simple and just try and catch some of the smaller fish that are in here. I've got a little tiny size 10 fang X there with a fake maggot on and I'll clip a couple of maggot, real maggots on. Gonna create a little single grain of corn rig. Maybe some fish, some little adjustable zigs. Yeah, just keep it simple and try and get a bite. And yeah, got a, got a special guest coming down, Hatcher. Absolutely buzzing to meet this guy properly. Um, mega, mega DJ and, uh, and producer in the music industry, specifically with regards to dubstep. And he loves his fishing too, so he's gonna come down, chill with us for a couple of hours. Let's try and catch a carp. Hey, yeah, hey, you've like. Yeah, it's one of them, mate. Pea green. Real bad. But we give it a couple of hours, like. See if we get anything out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can. It's a bonus. Yeah, absolutely. Is that amazing? Oh, got sunshine. 
Yes! Go on, Em. <laughs> yeah! That's right, I'm with the government. Man. That's what I was waiting for, man. Alright, he's going to take you around the corner, man. My life jacket, Adam's going in, mate. You can't lose this one, bro. Yeah, he's going to try and take you around the corner. I had an inkling I'd have to do this, you know, go fine. So, tiny little size 10, Bang X, fake maggot and a couple of real maggots, and a little light running lead. And it's paid off. Caught myself a little one. Yeah, just sitting there chilling, with Hatcher and Alfie chatting away. And that unmistakable sound. And we're in. Yeah, so obviously before that take we were chatting away about the music and that, but about the fishing hatch out. Always done it? Always, mate. Always. I think it's my getaway. Do you know what I mean? I think it's my getaway. I like so you're still doing it now, but like what, you started teenagers or yeah, younger? Yeah, well before the music industry and everything, before I'd even got on a set of decks, I was always going fishing with my nice boyfriend or whatever, down at Eden Bridge in the rivers and... Little bits? Yeah, and... little chubs and little rod and even the older gudgeon. Maybe a little gudgeon, oh, whatever. Gadget, yeah, yeah. Mate. So, then as I got older, I got into the calf and the lake fishing. Did you I, have a period where you stopped because of just the partying, and or have you always kept your hands in it? Do you know what? It's always, it's always had a, it's always had a, it's always had a bite on me. Yeah, so you say, do you know what I mean? I've, I've always had that buzz as well. I just want to get to the lake. Yeah. You know, I like that solitude where it's always mental, 24/7, gigging every weekend, no reception on my phone. Yeah. Me, cut the rods out. A couple of beers if I'm not even really a drinker, but you know, a little beer here and there. Yeah, just because yeah, just just I can. Yeah. Just to just relax and stuff. And what about other guys in, or, and ladies? In, is there other anglers? Mate, do you I know, know Shabba drops a little mate, fishing yeah, Shabba, bar and that every yeah, once in mate, a while. Shabba does it. Um, another drummer based guy, Heist. He does a bit of fishing, Jim. Um, Simon Baseline Smith. Does he? He does a bit of fishing. A uh, young man, an MC, does a bit of fishing. It's quite, to be quite fair, there's a lot of people in my industry that use this as their escape. As their escape. Yeah. You know, as See, their, I'm the other way. Uh, it's complete, we're us at work and that, once every sort of three, four months, we go and have a party now yeah. for a breakaway. Yeah, you that's know, it. to, it's actually interesting, man. I you give me a lovely out. analogy earlier, you know, with regards to your music and the fishing about some days ain't great, you know, and you'll turn up to a yeah. gig and that, and they're all like, not yeah. really having it, no yeah. one's up for it and that, and, and fishing's very similar, and you yeah. in the, in the end you went on to it say, you know, when they're boshing and that, and they're all lumping out, you're like, yes, everyone's we're having it in the yes, rain, like, it. yeah, that's a really cool analogy. It's the way you've, it's, yeah, that's how I look at it, really, it's like you can turn up at a lake and you think, this is going to be hard work, this is, yeah. like we turn up here today and you're like, look, it's pea green out there, we're not expecting much, but, yeah. you know, we'll have a good go and a good little chat or whatever, next thing you know, you're on Ping off, you think oh, it's, it. a, it's a bonus, and that must be you in the dull raven. Have you that's just drop that one bang and they and go mad you, for a little bit, that's and, that, and then they'll quiet down again. Lift them straight up, <laughs> lift them straight up, mate. Excellent. And just quickly, for my own information, actually, this dubstep are you the creator, the co creator with a couple of other guys? Well, yeah, or what I'm happened? Because we had two step garage, yeah, and it went off for yeah, years, that's right. And then dubstep coming straight from there, well, yeah, because we were selling loads of two-step in the shop it was mainly our biggest seller was the garage in the house but there was a couple of producers coming through like zed bias uh, oris j lb um, horsepower and these were making two-step but it was a darker strain of two-step <laughs> so i was incorporating this with my garage sets on the local pirate radio stations rinse and fly and flex and up front people were loving it and they was like what's this new kind of two-step you're doing and then magazines start picking up on it what is this genre what is what this is they're doing? doing what are they doing and it was literally i was having an interview with someone in the cafe next to the record shop and they was like so what what, what do we call this new strain of two-step spur of the moment i was like oh, it's dubstep it was very double orientated at the time stuck stuck dubstep and that was it i was having a burger and a cup of tea <laughs> and i was like yeah it's dubstep mate i don't even know where it come from and the rest is history the rest is history Literally. you know next thing you know you find yourself flying to europe to america and you're like 18 19 and you're like 
All right, happy days. Let's see what it's like. Lovely goes. times. <laughs> Bloody lovely. We should have a night Death. out. Mate, you'd be more than welcome to bring the team and out. And likewise, like I said to you, bruv, like, let's, let's get a weekend sorted. Yeah. Not let's in this Let's get a sort of weekend on one of them nice Nash can... Lakes, one yeah. of them little secret <laughs> Absolutely, locations. Absolutely, bruv. <laughs> you know the ones you read about in the magazines so that no one's allowed to fish. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you've got to be some proper celeb to get on We can hook it up, bruv. Mate, that Thank would you, be man. lovely. Thank you so much for coming down. No, Great Thank you for having me involved. It's been a pleasure. a couple of little bits of water that he's had a little look at in the past. One of them is no fishing, there's actually a few guys working in there now. Doing a bit of weed removal and stuff with the same net, but there's this canal section here, and yeah, it looks good to fish. Can't see the signs anywhere. And uh, yeah, seen a few fish knocking about. Again, no monsters, but a couple of proper and steady ones. We're gonna have a little creep along and uh, see if we can get on. No monster, but it's a London stunner. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolute minter. Lost his pal. It was a little bit bigger, equally as impressive, but yeah, this is certainly made up for it. That's what it's all about, man. Having a little mission about, wandering around, finding a few fish, and a good old, deadly simple tactic of a few maggots on the shank of a hook. Bosh. Absolutely chuffed. Man. I know they say it, everyone says it, I say it, you know, size don't matter, but it don't. It actually doesn't. Look at that. Proper peach. Got a net, I'm saying. Yeah, where can you see it? Yeah, it's just there, isn't it? I'll get it for you, bro. How are you gonna get it? I'll get it for you. You're gonna get wet? Don't, don't, don't read the audience, it's a mobile phone. <laughs> You're gonna get in for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where'd it go? Here. It's probably in the silkweed somewhere, man. No, I think it's gotta be a t shirt off hand job here. It dropped down, it went boom, boom, boom. Sitting on the ledge. You are a legend. Look at that! <laughs> Hillbilly phone fishing! <laughs> <laughs> at least I've got a phone I can give back to them and say, look, it don't work. <laughs> I don't know what happened! See, you know, it's raining out yeah, It just it's stopped like, working, I don't I know what happened. I, just, I don't know what happened, I can't put my finger on it. <laughs> hey, bro, I'm having a good one. Hey, no, legends, mate, I'm going We're 
um, in two minds. We're trying to think where to do the night tonight, but also where we can go now to catch a few fish. Um, have you seen? As you've seen, we've already caught. Well, Alan's caught a couple nice ones coming in the mirror, but they're not exactly big. Um, so we're trying to catch a double. We're just literally tapping something in the Tom Tom, a little park lake, I think. Going to have a look, see if we can nick a couple of bites, and uh, probably then go and get something to eat and go in somewhere for the night. With, um, maybe back to the tidal. Maybe back to the tidal. Yeah, the bait's there that we put in. But we've got to remember that our rods will get wiped out at two in the morning, so we better put them on different spots. <laughs> Absolutely love taking a floater in August. Basically, everything you chuck at them <laughs> is a bite. Sounds good, Alf, man. <laughs> a quick walk around the park confirmed what I really hoped. It did hold decent numbers of carp, and it was definitely going to be worth having a go in the morning. Well, Alfie and I have just had a look around uh, this park here, Burgess Park. It was all right, wasn't it? It's coloured. Yeah, it's coloured. Uh, I've seen it clearer. You know, one would argue looking at it and having walked around, there's actually a few fish in there. And yeah, we see quite a few, man. They're right up on the surface. Yeah, we see loads on the surface. It looks like if we to get a few floaters and rise up and drifting across the and a half Lake, decent yeah, chance. We'll get some taken floaters. Spoke to a, a couple of the anglers that are on there and they reckon the average depth is about six foot, so it's well within the remit to been able to fish sit, fix zigs comfortably. But looking at the time now, it's getting on a little bit, probably not worth shooting in there now for two or three hours. Uh, instead, I think go back to the tidal. Yeah, I think we'll go back to the tidal tonight. I've just saved the boat park and sat now. Get up proper early tomorrow and head straight over it. Early night tonight. Get ready for the carnage at three o'clock when the tide turns and not long after really get back in the motor and get over it and try and make a day of it really and uh, see if we can catch some of these better fish out of this park lake. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, sweet. I really wasn't too keen on going back to the Weirpool for our second night. I felt Alfie and I had fished well the first night, but the fish were just not feeding in that area. Instead, we went off to explore elsewhere and to see if we could find some carp that were actually up for having a munch. It's a nice shady spot. Just going to say the same thing, oh, just what we need after a very, very hot, action-packed, lot of walking day. If you lay on your belly, Yeah. Oh, it's an easy net. Back of the net. <laughs> oh, I hope I'm saying that later on. <laughs> no point hooking them if you can't land them, mate. Absolutely not. Pointless exercise. It's hard enough hooking them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's catch one. As with the previous night, our go-to approach was solid bags. However, I did decide to try a choddy with a blatant pop-up on just to make sure our downfall wasn't the solid bag sinking too far into the deep sill.
Much to Alfie and I's disappointment, we woke the next morning fishless. Again, there were fish in the area. We were just failing to convert carp sightings into actual takes. As the sun slowly began to rise, we watched as every aspect of the city crept into life. Everything except our bobbins, that was. Double. It was no monster, but a huge relief to finally catch a tidal carp from London. The choddy had come good. As the mullet shoals moved in, another rod was away. Bully. Oh, netting's club. Oh, there you go. Yes! <laughs> That's fishing for you. We've done two nights on this tidal stretch now. Had to chop and change and work at it, but it just shows that if you work at it, you know, there's always a method to catching them or a particular bait to catching them. And strangely enough, in this case, it's been chodrigs and, and white citrus pop-ups. Almost an achievement in itself, really. I've caught a few tidal carp before, but each and every one's really special. Now, they haven't got an easy life. They've got a lot to deal with out there. So to be rewarded catching one, it really is quite special, made up. Yeah, big up London, big up the Tidal River Park. How's your luck? Just moved the rod into a deeper hour and bosh, within probably 10 minutes, melted off. Yeah, absolutely made up. I think we're gonna give it probably no more than 10, 15 minutes. Then we're gonna head off to Burgess Park and spend a day float fishing. A little bit overcast today, but never puts me off with float fishing. I'm sure they'll still be up for a munch. Do you live on the... Yeah, I live on the boat. Oh my God. Do you see many carp? Yeah, you do. Yeah, I saw him yesterday. Look at this big guy. Oh. <laughs> so he's actually from Priceless, like literally, that is amazing. Well done, mate. Yeah, a bus is good angling. Let's go float fishing. Let's go float fishing. Let's go float a rotor. So we're down at Burgess Park. I don't want to say this, but I'm going to. Don't half look good for a bite. It's ridiculously hot. I'm going to have to get out of this jumper in a minute and probably stick some shorts on because it's deceiving. Even though it's ridiculously overcast, it's about 26, 27 degrees. But yeah, I'm buzzing. Had a great morning catching fish out of the tidal. And now we're at Burgess Park. Let's do this. Well, a couple of loaves of cheap bread, 
and a bag of gyro bug mix, a little squirt of pure crustacean extract, and I've got some real sloppy spots to go out there. I'm gonna keep it going out on the spot, see if we can bring them right up in the water, drop a couple of zigs in the middle of it. Yeah, someone's just, as I was walking down, jumped in the swim to the right of Allen where I, I was originally. So I think I'm probably just gonna use one rod and just float a fish today. Well, it would appear there's quite a few more fish, two or three swims down from here. Someone's turned up with a load of tortilla bread and crisps and all sorts. Pepper dash the surface of the water with it and the carp has started to show a bit of interest. So me and Alfie are going to head down there, chuck out some little hook baits in amongst them. Been here for an hour, hour and a half now. No army moving down there, see if we can get one a bit quicker. Don't miss a stop, miss a stop. Don't miss a stop. <laughs> There's Carl and that's Carl. That's Ollie Davis, that's, that's Alan Blair, that's uh, <laughs> got his name, I'm so sorry. Alfie. Not fishing. Not fishing today, no. What's the bar now? On summer holidays. Yeah. Loving it. Loving it large. Hello bro, nice to meet you. Yeah. You alright? Yeah. Get a picture with the boys. Yeah. You want a big group one as well? Yeah, get a group one. Take these lads, give them a go, and then when you catch one, send me the email so I can see how you got on with it. I don't believe this. Yeah, Are believe you it. sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You give it a try. Five special, man. They do these bites. <laughs> I don't believe it. Thank you so much. Right. Well, it's a better reaction than I got here yesterday. Some geese come up to me going, You got a geese from Corda? <laughs> no, you look like a geese off the Corda team. <laughs> Nah, mate, that's not me, like. <laughs> that's really nice, man. They're out on an adventure. I remember doing that when I was a kid, man. Getting on my bike and just riding for miles with your pals, looking for new things, new spots. They're doing just that. Fair play to them. I like the skatey one. Linear. Finally got one. It's been tough, but I'm saying to Al, man, I'm shaking. Like they're, <laughs> they're going mad, and literally, it was really windy when we come down here. It was you, Ollie, that said, "Oh, there's a lot more fish down there." We come up here. There was a load of like these flatbread poppadom looking things just drifting across but in amongst them there was a few swells and stuff so Al got a couple zigs out, it was still windy at the time but um, it quieted down and a few fish started to take but sorted ourselves back out, the wind... Was it worth it? Yeah, it was worth it because I managed to catch another one and we got a nice linear in and there. Al, so. as if you ain't caught a scaly bird. <laughs> <laughs> Bangers and mash. <laughs> Let's get him out and we'll show you what he looks Missed a couple now, probably three actually. But I think what's happening is, personally, I'm getting a little bit carried away with myself, a little bit excited. I'm still fishing these two zig lines, and as soon as I put the spod cloud out, they're coming up and taking it, but my zigs are just too short. So I'm actually gonna chill out a little bit and, and retie two longer zigs. They're probably about two and a half and, and three and a bit foot at the moment, and I think I need to be about four and a half, five foot. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna chill out, stop making manic cast trying to get one off the surface and actually get these rods working properly for me. It was 
was just minutes after adjusting the depth of my zig and I was in. Annoyingly, it swam straight behind a big post out in the water and went solid. Clearly the fish was badly snagged, so I left the rod and continued fishing with the hope it would swim back around the snag given some time. Yeah, the takes come pretty quickly. Obviously, as uh, the winds died down, we've noticed that there's a lot of fish taking. So now I've been slowly but surely trickling a little bit of a riser pellet and a few floaters in the swim. Yeah, he shattered me. Yeah, he's in the net now. My wrist's aching. They're still taking. Are you allowed to swim in it? No, no. I'm afraid not. Sorry, mate. I don't know why you would want to. You got one stuck. Right. Yeah. And if you allow me to swim out, I can free it. I'm I have literally past. just walked past the so, sign saying no bathing. Yeah. I saw the same sign. Yeah. She shouted at me. Yeah. I saw I could do it. But Poor fish. You stuck? He's stuck around these random holes that they've put in the lake. What's that? Oh. Yeah, you see the holes in there? Yeah. Yeah, he's gone around one of those. Are you alright? Yeah. Not police matter. Um, no, it's not criminal offence to swim the lake, but it's not going to you. But anyway. Right, well, if it's been a quiet day for you, it'll give you something to... Uh... <laughs> Don't be coming in there after you, put it that way. <laughs> These two can. Well, they basically said uh, they're not going to nap but... <laughs> Carl? You're allowed. With permission, well, kind of granted by the local police, Carl prepared to swim out and unsnag the fish. Just seconds later, though, I was in again. Wow, wow, wow. Right, yeah, if you're gonna go swimming. Carl, oh, please get me a car. In the name of duty and fish safety. Yes! My line was pointing straight down to the base of the pole. It's safe to say we were all desperate to land this fish. However, I could feel the line grating against the concrete at the base. Cut me off. Good effort. Damn it. I didn't feel a fish, I just felt the line going round and round. Maybe it was gone before I swam out there. It's quite tiring though. No? Well, you needed a shower. Do you know Michael Phelps? He's my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You see how quick that was? Yeah, it's in the blood. After Carl had swam halfway across the lake, I thought my chance would be over, but to our surprise, the disturbance seemed to excite the carp into feeding even more. Wow, 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 wow. I've lost two, now hooked the third one. Just gotta land it. Just gotta land it. Uh, all I wanted out of this whole trip was to get a brace shot with him, man, and now we can go common head to head. Cheers, Al. Look at this big fish! This is a carp! 
and I caught him from this lake. He's his mouth. <laughs> so he ate a small white pop up. This is what he had for tea. Oh. Flavoured in like a lime and smelled like a citrus flavour. That was his food. That's what he ate, so the fish he had for lunch. Say bye to the fish. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, a proper old bruiser. To be fair, couldn't have gone a lot better. Sometimes it doesn't go like that in fishing, but we've worked incredibly hard. This time it's been so worth it. Get that dorsal up. Well, that's it, let's call this a wrap. Big up London, big up Southie, thank you. You're welcome, brother. Let's slip them back. Yeah. Let's do it again soon, yeah? Yeah, fine. West side. West side.